everyone, I'm Carrie Pena and welcome to In The Moment, our talk show focused on living your best life. We are here today at the beautiful Mountain Shadows Resort, our first time taking the show on the ah. road, guys. Yeah. I'm here with my co-host, Gally Akenblit, who is the founder of Networking Phoenix, and Zenobia Mertel, who is a life and style columnist with Inspired Media 360.com. And in the moment with us today, this fine looking gent over here, John mm -hmm. Reyes, who is the owner of Reyes Contemporary Art, and the curator here at Mountain Shadows. Thank you so much for having us at your beautiful place. Thank you. You just got upgraded to one of the owners. I know. <laughs> Thanks for inviting us into your living room. Exactly. So we wanted to have you on the show today because you're curating this amazing modern art exhibit. Yes. And we're going to be talking more about that in just a second. Um, but you had written me a note that really caught my attention. And you said basically Phoenix is on the rise in so many ways. Uh, one in particular, art and architecture. Tell Correct. me about that. Well, um, Phoenix was just listed in an article in Architectural Digest. And basically, there is this mid-century modern, you might say, vibe to the city of Phoenix because it is pretty much a modern city. And I feel as if right now people from other parts of the country are starting to really look mm -hmm. at this area and really embracing it. Also, for the fact that the David Wright home was just given to the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation, yeah. uh, and that was safe from demolition, I think that people are really realizing just kind of what we have in our own backyard here in Phoenix, and other people are now starting to realize that. Funny that you mentioned the Architectural Digest article, because okay. I did pull a quote from there, and they said, uh, Mod Modern Phoenix Week highlighted the southwestern city beyond its famous manicured resorts. Once synonymous with Scottsdale, the heart of tourism, Phoenix proper has evolved considerably as a new generation gentrifies historic walkable neighborhoods. That was a great mention. Yes. Beautiful. And you have dedicated your life and career to art. I mean, what was the pull for you? You're actually like a broadcast or a communications major, huh? Correct. So I've always been visually, you might say, oriented. Um, the one thing about art for me, I guess, was growing up in a place where there really wasn't that much, you know, uh, visual stimulation on that level. So when I went to school, I just noticed that I was very much drawn to design aesthetic to those things that are beautiful in whatever way. And what I mean by that is, as an example of beauty, like wabi-sabi, something that shows a certain age from wear, but also something that is visually stimulating. And so with that, I just kind of like so sought that out. And so for me, what it is, it's something that is very life-affirming in many ways, because it's something that you bring into your life that is um, mentally challenging, and also just something beautiful and something beautiful that you can expand upon in your mind. Yeah, and art is, I mean, it, it is something different to all of us. And as you know, it's art and architecture and fashion, yeah. and all of those things are kind of like in one kind of pot, you might yeah. say, that you, that you pull from. So to me, one thing leads into the mm -hmm. other, and I think now Phoenix is kind of at that area where now people are looking at it for that kind of city. Are you inspired by the fact that you are living your, your dream? You decided you wanted to go into the art world and, and you've, you've went out there and done it big time. Yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, I, I like what I do. It doesn't seem like work sometimes, you know, and you should always try to, again, find your passion and I found it here in Phoenix. The people that I associate with in terms of hanging out with artists even, it's that idea that you just keep moving forward, mm -hmm. and that's what you do. Evolving. Exactly. And keeping your mind open. Absolutely. One of the pictures uh, that you sent to us that we loved is you with Derek Blasberg, who's one of the most beloved people uh, on the international art and fashion circuit, and he's Correct. also the CNN style editor. Yes. And um, you said about him that, that his, his saying is, never speak about the people you know. Yes. And, and he, he basically says, like, you can't go out and be a gossip about people. Correct. I love that. Tell me more. Well, you know, because he deals on that type of level, I mean, he is also uh, uh, a sales associate over at Gagosian Gallery in New York. He is very good friends with a lot of celebrities uh, like Gwyneth Paltrow and Carly Kloss. And um, he is also the CNN style editor. Yeah. He knows Tom Ford and Carl Lagerfeld, who have, you know, who he's interviewed. 
but the one thing that he told me, because we deal in this group of individual, is you basically don't reveal their, not their secrets per se, but more about their confidences when they actually confide in you. Mm -hmm you don't spread that around. I think that's, I, I love that sentiment because you should be able to have a conversation and not feel that everything, yeah. not even that it's a secretive conversation, but you should be able to just converse with someone and not think that they're gonna turn around and, and go and, and repeat it or tweet right. it or whatever, yeah. yes. you know? You. Yeah, so I really loved that. So tell us a little bit more um, about Mountain Shadows and the cool things that are going on here. And I've heard rave reviews about this restaurant. Well, thank you. Um, the developers here, Scott Lyon, Dupree Scoville, and Bill Nasikis, they really wanted to bring a element of interest and they wanted to bring in something that was branding for the hotel. And one of them is basically uh, an art gallery. And it was that idea that it would be revolving. So every two months when we do have a new exhibition, people would come in here and be challenged and surprised and it was something that was kind of, you might say, a little bit of an offshoot of a for sale gallery, even though we do sell pieces here, but also as a museum. It was this idea to kind of incorporate both into the space. So it's a pass-through gallery from the golf area over to the main part of the hotel. Yeah. And so it was that idea of it's an amenity, and it was for the clients that come and visit, and also for basically the citizens of Paradise Valley and the state. Uh, to make it more of a community-based hotel, even Correct. if you're not just flying yeah. in and staying here, it's gorgeous, by the way. I love it. I love the modern. Yeah. And it's like, what's old is new again? Because right. Mountain Shadows has yeah. been around for, for a long time, since the 50s. Yes, exactly. Um, but it's super cool. It does have a Palm Springs vibe. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us the fact that you guys have, have built out an exhibit as sort of one of the centerpieces here is gaining a lot of attention. Correct. Well, it was also that idea of putting in, you know, a, uh, a chef that is renowned, which is Chef Wiley, as yeah, you know. Yeah, he's so um, great. Which is Hearth 61. Um, again, the, uh, the exhibition space. Um, we have the golf course here, one of the very few, literally, that's small enough. It's a three-par. I'm not a big golf person. Yeah. <laughs> so, he's trying to think of the lingo. <laughs> exactly. But it's, it's just a place where you really want to kind of come and hang out. And that's yeah. really what they wanted to yeah. build here because that's also building on their previous history in terms of the original Mountain Shadows. Even though it is the same Mountain yeah. Shadows, it's something that was happening in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and they wanted to continue that tradition. I, I absolutely love it. I think it's an accessible glamour. Yeah, yeah and I mean, the, the revolving two months, every two Correct. months with the yeah. art we will keep it fresh. I mean, for locals, yeah. it's a reason to keep coming back. I love it, John. We're so glad to have you with us today. And now we are going to thrive with Gelly. And um, a lot of times your segments, Gel, focus on um, your blogs. Yes. And you've been blogging about sort of a health, I, would, I don't know if it's been a crisis, but something that you faced down recently, adrenal fatigue. Right. What, what is that? Yeah, so um, I, I have to discover what it is too, but you know, a lot of what I blog about, as you pointed out, has really been my healing journey um, that I've been going through over the past year. And um, by like a number of different things were happening with my health and I was finally like, you know what, I need to get myself into um, a doctor and I decided to go see a naturopath um, instead of seeing a, you know, a traditional um, physician. And what we discovered, we did a number of tests, and one of the things that we discovered is that I have something called adrenal fatigue. And I was like, what is this? I'd never heard of it before. You know, and basically, um, it's, it's fatigue. It, you're exhausted. Um, you know, and the telltale signs for me were, I had this crazy eye twitch. Like, you know, you get those eye twitches, and then you, you go to sleep, and then go away. Mine never went away, mm. and then things just kept getting worse. And so, anyways, through doing all these different tests, we discovered I had adrenal fatigue. And um, I ended up writing a whole blog on it, right? Because so now my naturopath has me in a regimen. Um, I'm going into month three. I'm feeling a lot better. What's the <laughs> regimen? What do you do? Um, well, so um, I talk a lot about it on my blog in detail. But to give like a quick synopsis, um, he's got me on supplements, uh, vitamins, high fat diet, lots of rest, obviously. He did give me a prescription. And it's a combination. He told me, he said, you know, for three, you're probably not even going to feel it for three months. So I'm going into month three, but de definitely feeling a lot better. But here's the kicker. So I write this blog, I put it up, you know, and I'm thinking, I, like I have adrenal fatigue, no one's heard of it. So many people commented on my post and messaged me and said, oh yeah, I have that too. Wow. Like, it's, like it's like the common colder, it's like not a big deal. And I was like, how is this possible? And I've never heard of it before. So I start researching it and come to find out it's actually one of the silent epidemics 
and a lot of the traditional um, you know, physicians don't even um, acknowledge it as, as something. Well, and walking around exhausted is not a normal way to <laughs> exist, right. it's but not. a lot of people do and exist it, and, like that. And it seems to target women. Again, I don't know all the science behind it, but it, it has to do with our hormones and how the adrenal uh, glands work. But all the people that messaged me were female, and they were all, you know, entrepreneurs, workaholics. I mean, all have been through, you know, you know trauma, you know, divorce or physical, which are all things that can cause adrenal fatigue. And sometimes, you know, what I discovered is that it doesn't happen overnight. It could be something that happened five years ago, and your body has just been slowly getting to that point, yeah. you know. So for me, I'm like, oh gosh, I don't know, there's a slew of things yeah. that really kind of caused it. So you wrote about everything and tell folks where they can find it, Gel. Uh, Followgelly.com is my blog, and um, it's the very first one at the top, and I just kind of tell people about my journey. So it, if you're suffering with any kind of fatigueness and you don't know why, look into it because it may be something that your doctor is missing. Yeah, so. and homeopathic remedies are always, I think, Absolutely. humbly, that right. it's always the best way to go first and then see if you need something more. Gally, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, and now we're going to talk about uh, my podcast, Carrie Pena Reports. Every week I sit down with someone who has a highly inspirational story to share. Most recently I sat down with an incredible woman. She's a nurse practitioner here in Arizona. Her name is Tara Sundum. And uh, she talked to me about this em epidemic going on uh, across the country, but in particular here in Arizona, babies being born addicted to opioids, and she is determined to do something about it. Here's what she said. Just seeing the, a baby withdraw is devastating. And we're talking about opioid addiction. We are, mostly. Mostly opioids. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what it is like when a baby is born, um, and do you generally know that the mother has an addiction problem, or sometimes are you surprised by what, what happens after the delivery? Sometimes we're surprised. Um, I would say for the most part, moms come in, they tell us, um, and, and we go, okay, and we deal with the issue. Sometimes we're surprised, and we're like, okay, usually babies start withdrawing by 24, 48 hours, and you see these symptoms, and you're like, okay, why can we not console this what baby? What are the symptoms? Um, babies will tremor have unconsolable crying. You can't get them to sleep. Maybe five, 10 minutes if you're lucky. Um, they vomiting, um, loose stools, uh, difficulty feeding, tremors, modeling of the skin. They sneeze a lot, yawn a lot. That must be the, so heartbreaking for it you. Is, it is. To, to witness that. It is, especially not, when you can't do anything. Yeah. So she is working to build out a place called Hushabai Nursery. This is a separate facility that will attend to these babies in the way they need because she said it is so critical to get them out of the frenetic environments, all the lights and the chaos of the ER. Mm -hmm. It was really quite incredible. What I loved about this interview, and Tara and people like Tara, is that she saw something that was really bothering her mm -hmm. and she went to look for a solution right. not easy easy thing to do she's fundraising she's looking for a building she's now um, got a lot of other nurse practitioners and nurses and health care folks uh, along with yeah. her but don't you guys just love people who are like let's solve the problem let's not yeah. just sit here and complain about it all the time of course you know yeah. and i think she shed light on a problem that not very many people know about yeah i mean it was incredible that interview just on my facebook page uh, at carrie pena has more than uh, ten thousand hits yeah. just on the facebook page so people are, are paying attention and uh, you can always see my podcast by the way on our website uh, inspiredmedia360.com now you're ready for a little wisdom wednesday john <laughs> Absolutely. You gotta love it. So our friend Luke Kayem, he is a master lifestyle coach. And today he's talking to us about 77 ways to have a date with your wife. <laughs> Thanks, Carrie. Ladies, it's great to be back for another season of Wisdom Wednesdays. You guys are gonna love my message this week because it's all about you, the wives. Fellas, if you don't have a regular date night on the calendar, I highly recommend it, not only for the bond of your marriage, but for the longevity. So we sat down, notepad and pen, and we wrote down some of the most creative ways my wife and I have ever shared a date, plus we added a few more. Here you go. I fly, comedy club, top golf, miniature golf, driving range, flow rider, culinary class, shooting range, bike ride to sushi, 
Bookstore, opera, floor seats at a Suns game, Manny Petty, dinner at the Wrigley Mansion, open mic night, spring training baseball games, gymnastics class, dance lessons, couples date, wedding crasher, rent a boat, walk anywhere, walk on the beach, yoga class, meditation class, comedy class, improv, reflexology, massage, give the world's best massage, skinny dipping, fly a kite, take a nap, lay in a hammock, go to a world premiere movie, attend a rock concert, air show, music festival, Maui film, festival, surfing and sushi, race cars, test drive a Tesla, play cards, truth or dare, uno, twister, checkers, chess, backgammon, taboo, take a flight to San Francisco for dinner, cruise in a convertible, ride a Harley, have brunch in a posh spot in Beverly Hills, order room service, sit and talk under a catamaran in Maui, binge watch Sex in the City or The Sopranos or both, go dancing, have a progressive dinner, pub crawl, visit an art museum, get lost on foot, have a picnic, ride on a carriage in New York City, horseback riding, hot air balloons, skydiving, take a hike, leave at midnight, indoor rock climbing, stand up paddle boarding, spoken word, watch the stars, watch the sunrise, throw a coin in a pond, write a message in a bottle, make a wish, draw your names in the sand. Doesn't matter what you do, just make sure you open all doors, leave your cell phone in the car, and hold her hand everywhere. My name is Luke Kayyem, living each and every single day with purpose, passion, and positivity. Peace. Thank you so much, Luke. Great to have you back. He's been like traveling all summer, doing his Luke Kayyem thing. But fundamentally, uh, dating, no matter if you've been married for 20 years, whatever, it's important. Yes. Having fun. We didn't we didn't like pry into your personal life. But <laughs> tell us more. I mean, tell us more. What, what, what did that celebrity uh, interviewer say? <laughs> but speaking of date night, this has got to be a great place to come for. Absolutely. You guys have like a lot of fun, like music and things going on here, huh? Yes, they also have saber uh, champagne nights. I want to say on Friday. Oh. oh. I actually, use a saber to break open the. Oh, how model. cool. Oh, yeah. I've never seen that. All right, yeah. so put that on our date yeah. night yeah. list. Yeah. Luke, thank you. Take me date yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've got your adrenal situation, <laughs> it feels like yes. you'll be up past 7 o'clock at night, so that'll help. Yeah. Now we're going to go out to lunch with mom every week. We do a restaurant review with our friend David Lux and his mom, Mama Lux, who we love so much. And he wrote in saying to us, it has been a hot summer, but even soaring temperatures and high humidity didn't keep Mama Lux from sampling some some of the great restaurants here in the valley. One we especially love is the local favorite, Postino. So they were at the Kierlin Commons location. Uh, David says, the big draw for me at Postino is big surprise, the bruschetta. Yeah. And he says, you know I count bread as a close personal friend. <laughs> <laughs> Postino sets the pace for bruschetta here in town. Mama Lux had the raspberry chicken salad. It looks so good. Um, he says, the design is always fun at Postino, mid-century modern. That's our theme yeah. today um, with that ubiqui ubiquitous orange pop of color that I'm still loving. Kudos for the cute wordplay on their billboard inside that says, you had me at Merlot. So Zenobia, yeah. we're going to vibe now. I am. And you're in Los Angeles for your vibe today. That's right. Oh my gosh. So. I mixed a little pleasure and fun, um, you know, family trip, summertime, and the Broad Museum was on my list. And actually, David had mentioned that. So oh, David he, Lux. Yes, David Lux. So, you know, he's from LA, and he's like, this is a not to miss. So when I went to find tickets, it was almost impossible. It's a free museum, but it is the hot thing right now in LA, in downtown LA. It is a contemporary museum. It started just about two years ago and it was founded by Eli and Edith Broad, philanthropists, and they have opened up the world of art down there in downtown LA. I know this speaks right to you. So there we went, all six of us, because my daughter had a friend in tow. Were and the kids looking forward to it or are they, they kind of like, oh, we're going to we had spent 10 days on the beach, so we were ready. Like, it was time, it, you know, and it was good to mix it up. And we like to do that as a family, and we're big proponents of having kids come along and see things that aren't just kid-oriented. And art is one of those things, I think, that can inspire in so many ways. And you never know when it's going to come back to a little kid's 
mind. So yeah. we took everyone ages five up to 13. Um, the museum itself is a piece of art. It was uh, developed by the architecture firm uh, DSR, very well known. And it sits right next to the symphony, the Disney symphony down there in downtown it's LA. Like yes, it's so amazing. And right now the piece de resistance is the Kusamu exhibit, which is a mirrored, infinity mirrored room. People are waiting four hours to get oh, wow. into this room yeah. for 45 seconds. Wow. You only get 45 seconds. It's very well um, planned out. You can go in and it's it just takes you away. Just the the art there from the prints to the, the abstract to the films that they had. It was really inspiring. Great for the whole family. We had conversations that went really deep. Because I saw one of the pieces that you took a picture of. It, the, the piece of art says, on it if you are so yes. successful why do you feel like a fake yep. yeah very much pop art lots of Andy Warhol right. um, Jean Michel Busquiet we I loved him we were we all had our little areas that you could tell that we were really inspiring and so we walked away very happy very full and very inspired highly recommend it if you guys go on a trip I can't wait to go back they're adding cool events in the evenings on Saturday nights they're yeah. doing performances it's such a great new piece to LA and it's free, it's open to everyone. Getting tickets are tough, so so you gotta plan ahead. And that rounds things out for us perfectly, bringing us back to yeah. you, John. And I mean, what Zenobia said there must resonate with you that um, you want people to come in here or wherever you're curating or, or showing art, um, and you want them to be inspired and think. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just leave us with a few words about how important you think that is to stay inspired in your life and open-minded. I think that that's kind of one of the things that you want to do and sometimes like anything in life that can be challenging and so you really have to find out what inspires you and I, I got lucky. I found out what inspired me and I decided to stay in that, in that business and I think that that's what art also does too because each and every artist if they're up to a certain point in terms of the, you might say, of the quality and the integrity of the art that they're making there's in it something for you. You just have to give it the time so that you visit with it and you connect with it. Yeah, beautiful. You know? And where can people find out more? Um, you can go uh, onto the Mountain Shadows website and look under art shows, and you can also register and uh, be notified of future art events. Very cool. We loved having you on In The Moment Thank today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for joining us. We're sitting on these very low chairs today, so <laughs> this is about all I can handle. So this moment I did the contemporary art, modern furniture thing. But thanks, you guys, for being here. We're so glad to be back. We took a yeah. summer hiatus, but we have a lot of cool things planned for the fall, so we hope you will follow along with us as our our inspired community continues to grow. You can always find us online at inspiredmedia360.com and on our Facebook page at Inspired Media. That's going to do it for us from the beautiful Mountain Shadows Resort. Have a great day.